So I came back from Retrofest with this lovely BBC master. You never know what you're going to get. It's had its power cable completely cut off. It has a strange extra switch, but otherwise, externally it's in good condition. Inside is a different story. Something is very, very loose and it doesn't sound so good. So I think we need to open this up and find out what's going on. Note to self, longer screws in the back. Right, so what have we got inside? Well, some things that are floating around. Well, that appears to be an IDE adapter. It's got a four gig SanDisk CF card in it. That seems to line up okay. It looks like the switch on the back is for a multi OS ROM. Nice. This battery is pretty crispy. More to the point, it's somehow not done any damage. I'm sure we can replace that with something. My order from Retro Clinic has arrived. Its contents includes a new battery to replace the crusty one found inside and a recap kit for the power supply. I suspect the cord was cut off after a failed portable appliance test, which is a standard electrical safety test in the UK. In a school where the BBC Master likely originated, cutting the cord off tends to be the go-to solution for failing equipment. This practice used to frustrate me many years ago when I worked in education. Before we can install the new caps, we need to remove and tear down the power supply. Clear instructions for this are provided with the RetroClinic kit. We are going to need to install a new power cord when we put this back together. I found this one in my box of spare parts. It's a little thicker, but it should do the job just fine. To remove the caps on this side, I'll need to remove the heatsink. It's held in by two screws, which have the heads filled with solder. We'll also need to unsolder the packages attached to the heatsink from the PCB. We're finally disconnecting the earth strap so I can take the whole thing out of the way. The instructions reassuringly show a nice color picture that matches up with the power supply. I just need to remove the electrolytic caps as shown here. Some isopropyl alcohol releases the hot glue that's holding these caps solid. Last components to remove are two reefer caps and two resistors. 
With a little quick cleanup, we are ready to start installing new components. Just a matter of placing and then soldering in all the new components, making sure to get the polarized caps in the right way. I had to up the temperature just a little to be able to solder the bigger areas. If repairing and building electronics is something you enjoy, you might also enjoy some of the shared projects that are available from our sponsors, PCB Way. They can provide prototype PCBs from as little as $5, as well as competitive 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and even injection molding. All of this is available at pcbway.com. So thanks PCBWay for sponsoring this video. It's also PCBWay's 11th anniversary event until July 18th, so you could still bag a discount on your next project. As a final step for the electrolytic caps, I'm heating the connections while applying light pressure from the other side to make sure they are all the way in. Finally, now the caps are in, I can replace the heatsink. And yes, I have lost a screw. No, God, please, no! Switching to the microscope to solder in a wire, I desoldered by mistake. And to clean up some solder bridges, I made on the heatsink components. Well, no point putting it off any longer. It's time to sort out a new power cord and get the power supply back together and back into the BBC. I'm going to reuse the spade and terminal connectors from the original cord by soldering them to the new cable, protecting the joints with heat shrink insulation.
The reassembly is just the reverse of the teardown, taking extra care with the cable grommets. If you decide to do this on your own BBC Master, take your time as they can be a bit tricky to get back in. The replacement battery is a 3.6 volt lithium AA cell. It clips in fine and has a handy self-adhesive pad to attach it to the case. With everything back in the case, a power on reveals it works. I now have another problem. I don't have any way to capture the output from the BBC Master. I do have an RGB to SCART cable, but no SCART input on my GBS control. I have been putting this off for a while, so let's put one together quickly so we can see if the Master is fully functional or not. I'm soldering on Composite Sync, the great cable, directly onto this PCB mount SCART socket, then the ground black, followed by red, green and blue. This reminds me I need to do some more work on the GBS control to build some better solutions to things like this. And finally some heat shrink insulation to stop any shorts. Now we can hook up the master, reset the CMOS memory and see if it's really working. So it's just a matter of holding down the R key while you turn it on with the switch for the multi-ROM in the center in this case. You can reset the CMOS, press break, and we've actually got ADFS. Hold down D and press break. We're into DFS. So it looks like we're pretty much working. I have no idea how the internal IDE interface works. We'll find out about that later, maybe. Let's do the important test. As it turns out, it actually booted and mounted the CF card when we reset the CMOS. And it's absolutely ram-packed full of games and software. And if you found this video in any way informative or entertaining, then please consider clicking like and subscribing to the channel if you want more like this. In the meantime, why don't you check this out next?